And how is everybody doing out there on this Monday? It's about, well, almost one o'clock in the afternoon here. This, I think, is a very interesting article, so let's, let's read on through it in case you haven't found out this supposed news. From Reuters, the U.S. will overtake Saudi Arabia and Russia as the world's top oil producer by 2017. Uh, the West Energy Agency said Monday, predicting Washington will come very close to achieving a previously unthinkable energy self-sufficiency. The IEA said it saw a continued fall in the U.S. oil imports, with North America becoming a net oil exporter by about 2030 and becoming almost self-sufficient by 2035. The U.S., which currently imports about 20% of its total energy needs, becomes all but self-sufficient in net terms, a dramatic reversal of the trend seen in most other energy importing countries. The IEA forecast, which advises large industrialized nations on energy policy, were in sharp contrast to its previous reports, which saw Saudi Arabia remaining the top producer until 2035. Energy development in the U.S. are profound and their effect will be felt well beyond North America and the energy sector. This is an annual long-term report giving one of the most optimistic forecasts by energy production growth to date. The recent rebound in U.S. oil and gas production driven by upstream technologies that are unlocking light, tight oil and shale gas resources is spurring economic activity, which it is, and it's opened up a lot of jobs around here, with less expensive gas and electricity prices giving industry a competitive edge. IEA Chief Economist Faith Birol told a news conference in London he believed the U.S. would overtake Russia as the biggest gas producer by a significant margin by 2015. Well, the Russians will not be pleased by that, eh? By 2017, it would become the world's largest oil producer. This could have significant geopolitical implications if Washington feels its strategic interests are no longer as embedded in the Middle East and other volatile oil producing regions. Analysts asked whether an energy independent U.S. would still be prepared to safeguard major trade routes around the world, such as the Strait of Hormuz in the Middle East. The U.S. will rely on natural gas more than either oil than, other, than oil or coal by 2035 as cheap domestic supply boosts demand among industry and power generators. Peral said he realized how optimistic the IEA forecasts were given that the shale oil boom was a relatively new phenomenon. Light tight oil resources are poorly known. If no new resources are discovered after 2020 and plus, if the prices are not as high as today, then we may see Saudi Arabia coming back and being the first producer again. The IEA said it saw U.S. oil production rising to 10 million barrels a day by 2015 and 11.1 before 2020, before slipping to 9.2 by 2035. Hmm. Well, let's keep them figures in your mind. 10 to 11.1 down to 9.2. Saudi Arabian oil output would be 10.9 by 2015, 10.6 by 2020, but rise to 12.3 by 2035. Well, then if we're only doing 9.2, then we're not number one by 2035. That would see the world relying increasingly on OPEC after 2020, as in addition to increases from Saudi Arabia, Iraq will account for 45% of the growth in global oil production to 2035 and become the second largest exporter overtaking Russia. OPEC's share of world oil production will rise to 48% from 42% now. Russian oil output, which over the past decade has been steadily above Saudi Arabia, is predicted to stay that at over 10 million barrels a day until 2020, when it will start to decline to reach just above 9 million by 2035. Russia, which remains the largest individual energy exporter throughout the per uh, period, sees its revenues from oil 
natural gas and coal exports rise from 380 billion in 2011 to 410 billion in 2035. The U.S. oil boom would accelerate a switch in the direction of international oil trade. predicting that by 2035 almost 90% of oil from the Middle East would be drawn to Asia. Now, the report assumes a huge expansion in the Chinese economy, which it saw overtaking the U.S. in purchasing power parity soon after 2015 and by 2020 using market exchange rates. Chinese real gross domestic production is expected to increase by a whopping 5.7% annually between 2011 and 35. A rise of 1.8 billion in the world's population to 8.6 billion would lead to a spike in global demand by more than a tenth to over 99 million barrels per day by 2035, keeping the pressure on the oil prices. <clears throat> The agency's central and new policies scenario, which assumes a range of measures are taken to curb oil consumption in Europe, the U.S., China, and elsewhere, sees the average import cost of oil rise to just over $215 per barrel by 2035 in nominal terms, or $125 in 2011 terms. If fewer steps are taken to promote renewable energy and curb carbon dioxide, oil will likely to exceed $250 per barrel in nominal terms by 2035 and reach $145 in real terms, almost level with the record highs seen four years ago. The share of coal and primary energy demand will fall only slightly by 2035. Fossil fuels will remain dominant in general in the global energy mix, supported by subsidies that in 2011 jumped by almost 30% to $523 billion, due mainly to increases in the Middle East and North Africa. Well, that is a whopping statement by the IEA, don't you think? If you keep up with Lindsay Williams, not everybody gets everything right on the timeline. But he had said a while back that uh, they had basically, U.S. had basically planned to screw over the Saudis and that we were going to increase our own oil production and begin producing it here and we were going to open up some very large patches that they've kept hidden and secret as a matter of national security for many decades and that they would uh, basically be robbing the Saudis because apparently the Saudis have bought many I think they, he said they had invested in a lot of the US Treasury notes in return for the deal broker back in the early days by Kissinger of us shuttering our domestic oil production. Could this be part of that little plan? Well, maybe. But as we read in the article, as we neared the end of it, they still had real terms of $145 a barrel. Almost the same as the record highs seen four years ago. So that'd be $147 a barrel. So, the way this article makes me feel, if any of this comes to be reality, is that we won't see our price of gas at the pump going down too very much. The last time I checked, uh, I think Friday, <clears throat> I think that would be Thursday's price actually listed in Friday's paper. I think it was 86 something. So if it's 86 something, <coughs> pardon me, and we have at this time $3.07 at the pump here. Well, you can read into that if it were $145 a barrel. 
it certainly wouldn't be three dollars and seven cents at the pump. I don't think we'll ever see the good times again, and I don't know if we'll make it to 2035. We got a lot of that's a lot of years in between here and there, and we got a lot of things going on. But that is the timeline given according to the IEA. But we'll see what does happen, what does not happen. What I do know is happening is that they are opening up a lot of the, the uh, shale production. Harold Ham is local from my own town. And he does carry a lot of clout in, in that uh, field. And they have made a lot of new patches up there up north. And it was announced the other day they found some here in the state that they plan to open up later on. So he's going after that natural gas. And he did, you know, he's been at it a long time. I'm, I would say he has joined the elite class, if it could be said. I mean, he has made it into the ranks of billionaire now. Whereas a long time ago, he was definitely not. So I'm not sure if he's a good guy. Money can corrupt and power can corrupt. But I do know that he worked pretty hard to get what he has. If it hasn't corrupted him, we'll see. But like I said, money and power corrupts. Or it can corrupt. It doesn't corrupt everyone but it can corrupt you. So if you want to check into this, do a little more research, I'll be looking into a little more things on this. I would advise digging in a little deeper on this because that will rearrange the the chessboard if we were number one in exportation of oil, certainly. We'll just have to see. Well, I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention because it does make a difference in our life how much we're paying for our utilities, our natural gas, for our heating and such, and for the amount of money we have to spend putting gas in our cars, which takes away money that we would save or buy clothes or food or pay for your kids college or just in general. So Monday is not one of my most favorite days because it's the first of five working days but it has to be done doesn't it? So I hope your Monday goes well. The holiday is coming up next week for Thanksgiving and I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. If you know someone that's poor it doesn't have anything to eat or very little. Maybe to make a plate, take it over to them, maybe invite them over even. But please pray for all the world. We have significant major problems dotted all over the world and there's people suffering everywhere. Famine, disease, poverty, suppression, And they need us. One prayer is a prayer, but many prayers together is even more powerful. So let's help to give them the power of our prayers. God bless you all. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.